Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and in today's video we are looking at the Minbei Pixel Artboard. This is a great creative tool if you're into pixel art, allowing you to create, edit and share your pixel artwork to anyone. It's a really amazing but simple piece of tech that pretty much anyone can use. So let's take a look. So a little bit of housekeeping before getting into the video. The Pixel Artboard will be going live on Kickstarter on the 14th of July with a ton of price options. For the first three days of the Kickstarter, it will only be $89. Now this then moves up to $119 during the Kickstarter campaign before heading to retail for $150. Now it will be available in multiple different colors, but as you can see here, I've gone for the retro yellow look. Now then onto the unboxing. You get a nice long braided USB-A to USB-C cable, a fabric lanyard, a sticker set, and some pixel art inspiration, and a nice big instruction manual. Then of course, the pixel art board itself. So you've got the power button on the top left, which has two functions. A short press will sleep the artboard, while a long press will power on or off the device. You have your USB-C connection on the bottom, which I do like because it means you can still create and charge at the same time. Then there's also multiple ways to get artwork on and off of the artboard, which we will take a look at. And then the slot for the lanyard is on the top right. Now you do also have the option of using the buttons or the touchscreen for navigation and then you do have the colour changer at the bottom which is a really great feature. And lastly you have the two front facing speakers for all of the retro beeps and boops from the artboard. For the buttons flanking the left of the screen we have the pencil tool, eraser and the left navigation and undo button. The right side has your settings button, thumbnail slash home screen button followed by the right navigation which also acts as a redo. So overall a nice easy compact setup right at your fingertips. The best part of the design however has to be that clear back. Now it does have a nice frosted design to it and it really reminds me of some of the older Nintendo consoles like the N64 and also the Game Boy Color from back in the day. It's just really nice to be able to see some of the internals and just in general have a really nice overall design to the artboard. Now although it is fully made of plastic it does feel very sturdy and also quite dense so if you do throw it in and out of a bag from time to time I don't think you're going to have any problems. However, I would definitely be careful of the screen itself. The whole design itself just feels really nice and sturdy. The buttons on the front, they do have a really satisfying click to them that kind of harkens back to some of the older console generations. And just in general, the screen itself also looks extremely nice. Also with the backlighting, it's great to use in port and no lighting conditions. Now you do have light up buttons on the front, so using the artboard even late at night, if any pixel art comes to mind, you'll have no issues at all. The screen itself also has some nice viewing angles which is great because if you are going to be using it laying down or if the artboard is going to be flat on a desk which was actually my preferred way of using it. And it does also fit really nicely into a standard jean pocket as well so again taking it out and about is no hassle whatsoever. Now I'm not sure of the exact screen resolution but you can choose different options for the canvas side of things when you're actually creating art. So you've got 16 by 16, 24 by 24 or a full 32 by 32 pixels. Now you also have the scope of using around 100 different colors and this is great because it has low saturation, high saturation, darker colors, lighter colors, you've got a ton of options to choose from. So just in general when creating art you've got a big spectrum of colors to work from and plenty of room for activities. But enough about the specs and button placement, what can you actually do with the pixel art board? Now in terms of general navigation you have the six face buttons and the power button and of course the touch screen. So all you have to do is power on by pressing down the button once and it does also act as a sleep button but also a turning on and off the device button if you do want to hold it down. You are then greeted by the home screen or thumbnail page as it's called in the settings. You can then go through using the left and right navigation buttons as you can see or you can just use the touch screen which is super simple and very responsive. They have space on each page for 20 pieces of art and a thousand pages. So you've worked it out, that's a total of 20,000 pieces of pixel art, so plenty to keep you busy. So first clicking the settings cog will take you, you guessed it, into the settings. The first page shows the settings for each of the buttons and what it does, so if you ever forget, you do have a built-in manual right here. There is also a barcode at the top that allows you to connect it to the application, which we will take a look at. The next page is the actual settings of the artboard. Here you have the options for the volume, brightness, you can also change the theming color of which there are three, the screensaver time, and the auto power off time. And then the last page just has some info about the pixel artboard like language and the factory reset options. Now heading back to the thumbnail page we have to get into the drawing side of things. All you need to do is click on a blank canvas or the plus button and you're ready to go. Now as you can see if I try to draw nothing happens which is good because it prevents accidental touches. So you just need to click on the pencil icon which puts you into the drawing mode. If you don't click that the screen will just let you cycle through full screenshots of your currently saved artwork. 
which may be a sneak peek of the drawing section which I've already recorded. But once you're in drawing mode, all you need to do is just to start creating. Changing the colour is also really simple, which we will get onto. Now you can click the left button to go back a step, which in this case will erase everything, but clicking the right button will take you forward a step or redo if you will. Or if you want to get rid of something more specific, you can use the erase tool on the left and then click the pixels or lines that you want to remove. So again, very, very simple. I really like going back and forth when doing Pixart to correct mistakes or just as a cool way to show people how you created something from start to finish. Now you can also hold down the pencil button to create lines and circles with ease. So selecting a line and dragging with my finger will make a perfect pixel line. Or if you hold it down again and set the circle icon, you can drag a circle on the screen again with ease. So if I just go back a step or two and remove this block, then again we have a blank canvas to work on. You also have the option to pinch and zoom which will either change the canvas size from 16 up to 32 or allow you to zoom in on a 32 by 32 canvas to get some more detail in. So you've got a ton of flexibility when making art. Whether it's basically 16 bit or 32 bit, you have tons of options. But now onto the coolest part of the pixel art board, and that is changing the colors. So all you need to do is slide on the color selector at the bottom and that's it. You need to again be in the drawing mode for this, but once you are, it's super cool seeing the color change from dark to light in different saturation levels, depending on where your finger is. So if I want to choose a nice blue color, I just go to the blue section, let go of the screen and I'm done. I can then go ahead and start drawing again in blue. And like I mentioned, there are a hundred colors on the pixel art board, so plenty to choose from to create the art you want. And again, the choice of line option, free draw, and the circle options, and the color options, means you can basically create anything that you want. Once you're done, you just select the thumbnail page icon again, and your artwork is saved and ready to share. And this can be done using the application that's available for both Android and iOS, which will basically be like a central hub to share your artwork and see what other people are making as well. So with the application, like I mentioned, you can basically look at other people's artwork, like it, follow them, share your own artwork, or you can just simply download anything that you've created directly to your device very easily. Now what I'm going to be doing is just showing you a very quick time lapse of some pixel art that I have personally created. Now it took me around 10 minutes or so, there were some errors and I did have to go back and correct a couple of things, but just to show you guys exactly how easy this thing is to use. And that's going to do it guys for this video on the Minbei Pixel Artboard. So all in all the artboard gives designers, artists and you know general hobbyists a go anywhere tool for creating pixel artwork that fits in your pocket really easily. And did I also mention it's super easy to use. If you guys did enjoy this video be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you've got any questions or comments about the artboard specifically or anything else on the channel let me know in the comments section down below. If you're not already subscribed now's a great time to do so and once you've hit that subscribe button don't forget to turn on all notifications so you're notified anytime I post a video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.